Welcome to demo 4 on automatic train control on any EEP layout using Lua but without writing much code yourself. All that needs to be done is configure the layout in Lua tables. This is the layout of the previous video but this time we added two dead end tracks here at Station North and there is also a third train. And they are all going to drive around on this small layout without ever colliding. Uh, on Station South we still have three tracks where the middle track is two-way traffic. Let's have a look how we can configure this. Let's first have a look how the trains are driving around on this layout with four tracks at Station North, two of which are dead end tracks and three tracks at Station South of which the middle track is two-way traffic. What we see over here is we have a passenger train which is driving backwards, which in reality probably would never happen. But in this demo uh, right now we allow all the trains on all the blocks, which means uh, what, we, what we see happening over here, the steam engine is running into a dead end block and it will reverse and it will drive backwards uh, out of that block. Um, we can change that of course, but in this demo first we look at all trains can drive everywhere and in the next video we'll have a look how we can change that such that the passenger trains all drive normally forward and only this cargo train is going to drive between the dead end blocks and reverses. Uh, that is the fun of this Lua uh, table uh, configuration. Uh, you can change how the traffic on a layout is going to be. Uh, with the same layout you can derive different ways of playing with these trains. Let's first have a look how to create a dead end such that the trains do reverse uh, when they drive out of it again. If you download the zip file, the link is in the description, uh, you also get an extensive user manual which is available both in English and in German. Um, well, let's jump in this user manual to layout 4 and there it is explained how we can do a dead end block uh, and have the train reverse. Uh, what happens over here, there are two ways of doing it. What happens over here, a train enters the block and then this sound signal tells Lua that the train now actually is in this block. Uh, in this upper track what happens is it drives on until it sees the pre-signal that is on stop. This signal over here is controlled by Lua and of course it is put on stop when the train enters uh, and then uh, it stops before the signal and then after a while Lua may decide this train can go again it's still driving forward, but as soon as the signal becomes green, the first thing that happens very shortly behind that signal is the train triggers a train sensor and that is configured such that it reverses the train speed. Now all you have to do is yeah, to, to fumble around a little bit with the placement of this sensor such that it almost does not show that it first starts to drive forward and then suddenly reverses. This can be a normal signal or yeah, normally in reality there is no signal at a dead end. So you could also make it an invisible signal. And then uh, th this is the signal that's controlled by Lua, uh, which means there is no visible signal here at, uh, when, when the train is leaving this track. But you can place one here, uh, but that will not be Lua controlled. You have to connect it to this signal, which means if this signal is red, the, the signal that you place over here also is red. And if this signal uh, is controlled by Lua to become green, also this signal will become green because they are coupled. That is a function that you can have in these signals. Okay, the second uh, way of doing it is this bottom uh, dead end track. Again, the sound sensor triggers that the train arrives. 
uh, there is a block signal over here which is controlled by Lua uh, but that is in the other direction so we don't see that right now we just drive on we we come across a, sig a signal sensor that puts this invisible signal on stop this signal is not controlled by Lua it is controlled here by this sensor uh, then the train is uh, uh, driving on, it is slowing down, slowing down, going to stop, but just before it stops, it triggers another signal sensor that puts it on go again. But the speed is now very low and it still uh, uh, crawls a little bit further until it reaches this, speed, this train sensor which reverses the speed. And then the train goes back again and it uh, stops in the normal fashion here at this signal. And this is the signal that is controlled by Lua. Okay, so these are two different methods. You can mingle them, you can use either one of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, they both work fine. This is the 2D view of the layout and let's see what we have over here. These, this is the main switch, uh, it's a signal with number 3. So in the configuration part of the Lua code we write down that the main signal is number 3. The next thing to do is to define the block signals. This is a table that is an option, it's not uh, mandatory, but if you use this table uh, Lua can do the consistency checks if you have not forgotten uh, any numbers when you define your routes, which can be quite helpful. So let's have a look how to fill this table. Uh, over here we see uh, uh, block number 8. Uh, yeah, that is this block over here. Every block has a block signal and the number of that signal is also the number of that block. So this is block number 8. Let's have a look over here. Here we see a signal with number 26. Uh, so that is also a block. Let's have a look at the code. Yeah, over here is uh, a signal 26. So all you do in this table is just name all your block uh, signal numbers and you can give them a text uh, to better define them and uh, in, on a large layout. That can be nice to detect uh, which signal is which track. The next table is the table of the allowed blocks. Well, in this first example of demo 4, we are just going to say uh, uh, that all the three trains can go everywhere. Uh, so for fun, uh, I just called this table everywhere. And as you see, all three trains are allowed everywhere. And everywhere means, yeah, again, all the blocks, the same blocks that we just filled in in the block table, all the blocks are mentioned again, but now followed by a number, and that number specifies a stop time. If you don't want a train to stop here, fill in one second, that is short enough for it not to stop. And 30 means the train will stay in this block for at least 30 seconds. The next that we come across is the trains table. We have three trains now. They all have gotten a name. The new train has got the name Orange. That should be the name in this table, should be the name that you gave the train when you placed it. Uh, every train also has a signal number. Yeah, let's have a look at that. There are three signals over here. Those are used to start or stop individual trains if you like to and there is a signal 4 a signal 30 and a signal signal 14 uh, apparently and all three trains are allowed everywhere okay so far this was all quite straightforward let's move on we have one two-way block and that is the blocks number 18 and number 9 let's check that uh, yeah, over here we, ooh, not there, over here we have uh, number 9, yeah, that is correct. And over here we have block number 18, yes, that is correct. And that is our two-way traffic block, which we simply write down in the two-way blocks table. 
Then the final part is to define all the routes. It is a little bit of work, but there is a tool available. Please read the manual or wait for a demo on that tool. But you can do it by hand. It's quite straightforward. Just the thing is try to make no mistakes. Let's do this example. We want to go from block 8 to block 13. Let's have a look what that means. Block 8 is over here and block 13 that is this one. We want to go over there. What needs to happen? Well apparently we need to uh, use uh, turnout number 2 and we have to switch turnout number 12 and we have to switch turnout number 22. 2, 12, 22. And uh, no wonder, over here we see turnout 2 straight, turnout 12 straight, and turnout 22 is going to branch. Is that correct? Yeah, 22, that should go this way. And this way, this one should be straight, and this one should be straight. And that means we cannot drive from 8 to 13. That's all that we have to do over here, but we have to do it for every possible route. It is a little bit of work, but hey, the result is big fun. And then uh, here at the bottom, the remaining part of the script, there is no need to tinker with that unless uh, you have used a different type of signals that uh, have uh, their states reversed. Uh, that can happen, but it is not difficult Then just edit this part of the code. Well, let's have a final look at how this drives. Alright, so let's have a little bit of trains driving around according to these tables that we just configured. Every train is allowed in every block. Which means that if one of those passenger trains, this orange one or the steam one, is going to drive in a dead end, yeah, then it uh, will reverse and it will suddenly drive backwards. Which in reality would probably not happen normally. And that is uh, the reason why in the next video we are going to change this behavior and we'll have a uh, uh, say counterclockwise uh, allowed blocks for the steam engine and we will have clockwise blocks allowed for the orange train which also means that I'm going to uh, change its direction and, and make it drive clockwise and then we have this cargo train and this cargo train that's the one that is going to use these dead end blocks. Let's just play that that is an industry area and it will go to a dead end and then it will drive around and it will go to the other dead end. The, the interesting question is how to change our Lua tables to accomplish this with this very same layout. Well, maybe see you back there. Uh, until then, have fun.